Hello. Morning. Good morning, Samranda. Good morning, Pastor Kwame. Good morning, Pastor Richard. Good morning, everyone on the platform, and welcome to Morning Dew. Can I share my screen? Yes, please. Okay. All right. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, you can. Okay, thank you so much. Once again, good morning, good morning. We are all welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. Today is Amen. Friday. Today is Friday the 18th. We are all welcome to morning to you. And uh, before we start, um, I'll just like us to do an opening prayer. And after the opening prayer, um, if there's anybody with a testimony, you are free to share whatever the Lord has blessed you with, with us. Amen. 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 So um, let's just bow down our heads and we pray to God. Most precious and everlasting Father, King of glory and chance of day, our Lord, our God, our King, our Redeemer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for another brown new day that you have given us to come and worship you, to come and lift up your name, to come and glorify your name, to come and reverence your name. Father, we say thank you, Lord God Almighty, for your special grace and mercy that has brought us this far. That we appreciate you. We say we are so grateful. We are so thankful, Lord God Almighty, to be alive this day. We thank you for it's not by our mind, not by our power, but by the Holy Spirit. We say be thou exalted be that glorified. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for overnight protection. We thank you, Lord, for our lives. We thank you for the lives of our family members, for the lives of our loved ones. Father, we thank you that as we have come before your presence, that will not go back the same. That, Lord God Almighty, you have stretched your hand over us and you blessed us. You have stretched your hand over us, O King of glory, and you speak into our life so that at the end, we alone you take all the glory. Holy Spirit, have your way on this platform this morning and do what only you can do as we come collectively as a family in one accord to praise your name have your way thank you lord thank you our father in jesus mighty name we pray amen 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 family once again as i earlier said um if you have a testimony you are free to share your testimony with us the, the platform is free So um, it's been two weeks since um, I shared my testimony about my job. So um, the very next, it was it was Thursday I shared my testimony. It was on a Thursday I shared my testimony. So that Thursday afternoon, um, I was going to get my hair cut. And um, I was sitting in the barber chair waiting for the guy to finish up the person next to me. And so I was just scrolling through my emails and I found an email from my job and um, stating that uh, they want to interview me on Monday at three o'clock in their offices. And I was like, oh, no, I have to work Monday at two o'clock. How how is this going to happen? So I called the HR lady who has been, you know, favoring me and helping me um, through this whole entire process through, you know, the hard, the hardships that, you know, that been happening to me and, you know, all these things. So I call her, it was like five minutes to five and she answers the phone and she's like, I said, Miss Margarita, I have to work Monday and they're doing the interview at three. How am I going to be able to do that? And she says, no worries, June, we're coming to you. And I was like, what? And she says, yeah, we're going to come over there to the dining hall and interview you there. And so, um, glory be to God, favor, right? Amen. So um, the man came and it's actually the guy, I actually like met him and spoke to him. 
And when it, when the hurricane came, we were we were um, you know bagging up a lot of food for the students because we didn't know what the hurricane was going to do, you know. And um, you know the manager, um, the one that was being very mean to me, she was like, "Only give them like one sandwich and two bottles of water," you know. And like I looked at her and I was like, "Yes, ma'am." But in all the while, in my mind, I was like, like, literally, if you fell off the planet, because we're having a hurricane, we don't know what's going to happen, you know, so I was just loading up these people's uh, bags with, you know, sandwiches and giving them like six bottles of water, you know, like, because I didn't know. And I wanted to make sure the students were okay, you know, and um so anyway, I had spoke to this man who was doing the interview. His name is Mr. Brian. And um, so he hired me. He hired me as a supervisor. <sighs> Amen. So um, right now, I, um, I'm making like $14 an hour. So I did research. He didn't tell me. He didn't get a chance to tell me because I had opened up the office door and he didn't want anybody else to hear our conversation. And so um, he was like, oh, and by the way, this comes with a huge increase in pay. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, praise God. Like nonchalantly, right? You know, okay. And so um, the other night, Wednesday night, I was working and I was only supposed to work until seven. And so, um, you know, I wanted to hurry up and run out to my, you know, get everything together and run out to my car and get online so I could be on the well, you know, on, <laughs> on Wednesday. But we were so busy and all these big supervisors and district managers and he, Mr. Bryan was there. And like, they had like a, like a party for, um, uh, the students, it was like, they call it the harvest, the, the, the hub harvest. And so we had, you know, all different kinds of like, you know, Thanksgiving food. Right. And so, um, I ended up staying until like nine o'clock, you know, because we were just super, super busy. And so when I was leaving, Mr. Brian pulled me to the side and he goes, I really like that. What you did. And I was like, what, like, I was dumbfounded. I was like, what did I do? I literally said it to him. What did I do? And he was like, you stay in late. I like that. He goes, you and I, and I was watching you, how you were still doing the cash register and you were still wiping tables at the same time. And I was like, Mr. Brian, that's just what I do. You know, that's just, that's just who I am. That's that. I mean, you know, that's just me. And he was like, I really like that, you know? And so that was like, that, that was, that was just so good, you know? Mm -hmm. and then, um, you know, I, I believe, you know, I believe that, that God allowed this to happen with the register. Like there was a mistake in the register and it ended up taking 10 meal plans off of, um, off of a student's card, you know, and, and you know, if they don't have a meal plan, that's not very good for them. But if they do have a meal plan, it's not so bad, you know. And so um, one of the supervisors, one of the district managers was came over to me to say hi. And I was like, oh, there's an there there's something going on with the register. And he looked at it and uh, he was like, let me go get Brenda, you know, the lady who was giving me such this hard time. So him and Brenda are standing next to me and Brenda's looking like at the register and she's like, I don't know how to fix it. And I said, well, let, let me go get Miss Jody. Miss Jody knows how to fix it. Miss Jody's fixed this before it's happened before. Let me go get her. So, um, the Lord, the Lord allowed, um, Miss Brenda to look like a straight fool in front of this man because she's been there for 19 years and she's like you know one of the big managers inside this dining hall and like she didn't even know how to do this simple fix 
So when I brought Miss Jody back up, it took her like two seconds to fix it. And she was like, oh, it, it, sometimes this does this, you know, like Miss Jody maybe looks like super good in front of the people. And she's like, sometimes this does that. It does this. It happened like this to her before. I, I fixed it. It just took 10 meal plans off of a student's card at one time. And so, um, you know, I just praise God, you know what I mean? I just, I just praise God that like favor is upon my life and, um, for the, um, for now the opportunity, um, to work. And he told me that I would end up with 40 to 60 hours a week. And, um, you know, so I, I praise God for this. And so now glory be to God, I don't have to work four and five jobs every day you know I only have one job mm -hmm. and looked into the Aramark um the Aramark supervisor pay and it's $25 an hour so I'm super I mean I'm super super excited Amen. It's God's doing. Yes, He is. Amen. 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 Thank you for letting me share. Amen. 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 Um, I would just like to um give this very short testimony with regards to just to appreciate the love and to say thank you, Father, for being so faithful to my family, to myself, like for, for the whole of this year, this 2021, you know, um, I wanna believe that um, I haven't been to the hospital. So I'm just like using this opportunity to say, thank you, Father, for divine health and for divine protection. Mm -hmm. That's God's doing. You know, <laughs> so I just wanna say thank you. And uh, also for the fact that um, actually I do have a job Father, I said thank you for providing me with a job. I'm truly, truly, I do appreciate and I'm truly, truly grateful. And even to provide the means for me to like um, pay my bills is something that uh, I'm not taking it for granted, you know? So I'm saying that, Father, thank you. I really do appreciate for making the way. It's not by our own making, but it's by his own making that he provides for us in order to take care of our needs, our wants. So Father, I say thank you. Amen. And I also want to say thank you for this platform. And uh, like it most surely like the morning dew, the, 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 the this thing, like the, the, the activities that we have during the week that um, he has made it possible for me to really like attend the, the most of the, the Bible studies the lessons, everything. He has given me that opportunity to be able to be like present. I'm not taking it for granted. Most especially like this morning, due 5 a.m. I really want to. I really want to say thank you, Lord, because I know it is. It's by His grace, you know, like getting up at time because it's like, you know, sleep is so sweet in a way that but when that when is that five o'clock or four something, you know, there's a spirit that just get me up like that even. So I want to believe that um, it's God's doing. He has sent the spirit to always like woke me up to make Amen. sure that I attend the morning dew. And uh, I just want to say thank you for the, this platform for each and everyone that has been a blessing to my life, that has turned the gap to pray for me in one way or the other. And uh, I've learned a lot from each and everyone from the sharing everything. I've learned a lot about um, there's so much um, studying of the word of God on this platform in a way that um, we, really, we need the word of God. We really need the word of God. So I just want to thank um, the, all the pastors on this platform, Pastor Midred, Pastor Kwame, Pastor Shelley. I want to thank them for the wonderful teaching and the, for the impactation that, um, that impacted my life with. I'm truly, truly grateful. and. Uh, I pray for more grace on this platform and that um, God is going to um, really take the, the platform to a dimension that um, only him alone knows. Amen. 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 Awesome.
Amen. Amen. So I have two testimonies, but I'll spread them out so I give others a chance. So the first testimony will be, it's a testimony and also a word of encouragement and advice for us. So when we were going through, now I want to testify about the beauty of walking the pages of scripture. You know, quite often when we choose a book of, a, of the Bible, there are many ways that people may look at it. We may choose to look at it as a storyline that we are trying to cover or just one more book in the Bible that we, we need to know or look at it as a book in season or allow that message to play a, a vital role in our lives during that season. For me, I look at it from every dimension, most especially the fact that it plays a role in my life while it lasts. A few months ago, we studied the book of Esther. And as we, we were studying, I mean, I'm just taking it back to Esther, but it, this is how, this has been a consistent pattern in my life that every time we choose a book to study, something significant happens in my life to serve as a, an approval that this is what we ought to be doing. And uh, this is a word in season. It may speak to each person differently, but as a leader, it's very important that the Lord confirms the word, especially in your own life. Amen. Amen. When we were studying the book of Esther, um, the Lord, of course, you, you, everybody heard the testimony that I shared during that season. And many other things happened. But most especially, what I want to say is that during that season was an opportunity for people to to trust the Lord to set them free from captivity beyond the fact that it was kingdom advancement. But the overarching theme of the book was that God was going to use someone to set the people out, out of captivity. Now, how do, you, how do we make this applicable to our life? Number one, we could actually believe the Lord to set us out of captivity. Or number two, we ask the Lord to help us become that person, that leader that will set others out of captivity. In my life, the Lord did both. He set me out of captivity and Babylonian captivity. And then he also helped me to become that leader that will help people get out of captivity. Now we are studying the book of Ezra. Of course, we are looking at how kingdom advancement is being obstructed, the obstacles that we face during kingdom advancement. But above all, we see that um, there the altar was repaired. And then we see that the house of God was being built. Now, how should you and I be taking it? We should look at our altars in our homes because we gather as one family at the global altar, but you have an altar in your home. It's an opportunity for each person to repair the altar in their homes because that is what the people, after they got off captivity, that's what they did. They began repairing the, their altars and they began building the house of God. So the second thing that we all should be asking ourselves is, which house of God should I be building now? And am I building it? It could be your house. It could be another house. But I really want to emphasize that please do not let the book of Ezra end that you haven't repaired your altar, number one, and you haven't built a house of God on purpose. That is how we make a book of the Bible applicable in our lives. And that's how we walk the pages of scriptures consciously. Now we'll be moving from Ezra to Nehemiah. He'll be building the walls. So the question you and I should be asking ourselves is, which wall should I be, be building? And what should I be putting in place just like Nehemiah did? Or am I the Nehemiah or am I a beneficiary of the work of a Nehemiah? Amen. Amen. So above all, I just really want to thank the Lord for making scripture come alive. It's not just a story. It's a life that I live. Amen. It's a life that I live. I can look at every book of the Bible and tell a person what the Lord used that book to do in my life signif significantly. That's what we call encounters. Amen. That's what you, you encounter that book and you live the lifestyle of that book. You could either be the Timothy of that book or the Titus of that book, or you become the beneficiary of the Titus of that book. Amen. 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 I thank God for that. So that's my, my testimony. My first Amen. step. Amen.
Amen. That's powerful, Dr. Melcher. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Anyway, so I'll testify. I, I guess I have three testimonies. So <laughs> now that Sister Christine is on the line, I'll testify. I know she, she may have a testimony. I will testify that her mother arrived safely, and I'm so excited. Praise God. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Man. I don't know when she plans to come, but at least that's my testimony. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. 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 We were so concerned that mom may be a bit confused at the airport because she's because of the language, but she made it through easily mm -hmm. and smoothly. So we thank God for that. That's yeah. right. Yeah. When God is in the midst, everything just works just right. Yes. Amen. 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 I it wasn't as smoothly as it could have been, but he definitely was watching over her. They did give her a bit of trouble um, because she was supposed to ideally she should be coming to me in Maryland because I'm the person who um, who filled out the documentations, but she was going to Minneapolis to my brother. So they had a lot of questions as to why she was headed that way. Um, but uh, the man was very, very gracious and, and, and just let her go through, but he did tell her that she has to go to Maryland. Um, but I, I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful. Amen. 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 Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <clears throat> I have a small testimony. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's really a testimony more than a statement, but nonetheless, um, for the book that we're reading now, um, you know, I, I read the Bible a lot and I, I, love, I love the word, but the small books is not something that I read on a regular, right? So the book of Ezra, <clears throat> excuse me, I've read um, when I read the book from Genesis to Revelation. However, spending time in Ezra is not something that I can say that I have done um, like we're doing right now. So I just want to say thank you to uh, Dr. Mildred and Dr. Kwame, just to get my focus in that area, because looking at uh, Ezra um, brought some things to life, and I just um, I just want to thank you. So now, because of that, I now go into the smaller books, just to um, you know get really familiar with the book as well as to see what the Lord is saying in them as far as where we are now. So I just want to thank you for that. And um, I, did, I did learn quite a bit from what we have done thus far. So yeah, thank you. That's, that's what I wanted to say. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know, every time I read the book of Ezra, I'll be like, but I wish it wasn't who a lady. When the Bible says it was a scribe and a teacher, is well. I'm like, this is me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> a scribe and a teacher. He's my yes. favorite character in the Bible. <laughs> yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Quite a bit. I, when I read it, so I just, I liked him, Ezra. I just liked him, like the way he said it, like that he was a scribe, you know. Then the hand of God was over his life. So I just like so much like him and it makes me to read it more. That's yes. <laughs> and yeah. Minister Coco was like saying that um, we should pray for 
for for um we should pray for more Ezra's on the platform and wish us something wonderful. Amen. Yes, amen. Mm-hmm. And more scribes too. <laughs> amen. Yes. Wow. Ah, amen. Because in this digital world, I mean, people don't write a lot. The people, I mean, of course, you document through typing and all of that. But we, we have to keep the the ancient ways of writing with our hands and our pens. <laughs> yes, I do that. When yeah. even last night, um, I was I'm studying for um to get a certificate as a chaplain. And as I read each chapter, I'm writing down whatever significance that I receive from each paragraph so that when I'm going to take the test, I can have uh, the information. And when I write it, I will remember it. That's why I write. Every time I write the words down, it, it, it's instilled in me. And if I read it and read it out loud, it is instilled. So that's why I do. I love to write as I read. So you get the definitions as well as the main topic or um, the significant names and and who they're related to and things of that nature. So yeah, I love to write like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And one more, one more testimony. Okay. Last week I was in um Indiana. I went to Indiana to minister on Sunday. That's why I was not on the platform on Sunday. So um, Sunday morning over there. And um, just before I minister, as a matter of fact, I introduced them to that song, Obinigwe, because I, <laughs> I love it. I love that song. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. Every time I hear it, it just takes me deeper with gratitude of what did I do to deserve this kind of love, mm-hmm. you know, or or just to know that I serve such an awesome God that would do the things that he did for me without me doing anything, just receiving him. So, so they were playing that song. Oh my goodness, the, the power of God just dropped in that place. It was so good. And then uh, the apostle for the house, um, as well as the pastors that spoke Saturday night, the one that were the ones that were there from Friday night as well. So everybody was basically there Sunday morning as well. So now it's my turn to speak. And the apostle, she um, she came to me before I went up, and she said, the the Lord said that she ought to lay hands on me for the apostolic. And the rest of the people that were there, they were in agreement. And they and they were like, do it. It is God. So she laid hands on me on that day. So, yeah. So I just wanted to uh, share that with you as well. Amen. 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 Glory. Glory. Yeah. Amen. It was powerful. It really was. I think that's one of the better times while I was sitting there the Lord was speaking to me although I had my message but he he told me to address the children first which I did and I I don't know that the children at all but the the individual ones it was like four of them specifically and I'm telling you I I flow in a in a a prophetic anointing that was just crazy saying whatever I was saying to them they knew them and they knew that what was being said was true. And she, the, the pastor for the house, she was like, oh my God, you were right on point. Everything you said was just so true. And each individual one that you spoke to ex- is exactly what it is that, um, that they're dealing with and, and what was um, needed to be addressed. And I was like, okay, well, that was definitely not me because I don't know them. So that was really, really good. And then 
the message was um, Deuteronomy chapter 28 through 1 through 13, talking about blessed shall you be when you go in, blessed shall you be when you go out. Your basket is blessed, your womb is blessed, your field is blessed, that type of thing. And so it, the, the main thing is for the blessing to flow is obedience. Amen. Yes. Amen. So it was really good. Amen. That's Amen. it. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. And uh, following the testimony that I gave, I want to reiterate that after each person goes back and reconsiders what their the state of their altars and uh, rebuild it and uh, build the, the house of God, whatever the house is. Remember to dedicate, just like the people did, they dedicated the temple. Amen. Amen. Remember? Amen. Yes. That's how we walk the pages of uh, scripture on purpose. And also, I, I think I made this comment on the platform. The, the book we are reading, the one which Sister Miranda and Sister Predita are coordinating, the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, mm -hmm. I was reflecting on everything. And I realized that as the from the time we started reading the book and as the weeks unfolded, I realized that the, the, the way events turned out, it was just in line with the book as well. Oh. The, meaning oh. all laws that we are talking about have actually been applicable or have been applied on the platform. So it's just oh. a book that we are reading, but it's it has, in fact, we've walked the pages of that book as well. Amen. And that way, but activities and events just turned out to fall in place that way. Amen. Amen. One of the things that um, the, the church where I went to, they the pastor she wanted me to stay for this week and I was like no I can't but anyway she wanted me to stay and teach leadership <laughs> I was just laughing you know I was just absolutely laughing because um that book uh, you know um reading the leadership book was just just awesome but I also want to give credit also to the platform concerning that book because um, there's a young man that I'm mentoring and he, he's really, he's saved. Um, he's filled with the Holy Ghost. However, he's very um, passive. That, that leader in his, is no, he's not um, passive in terms of, he doesn't know the identity or anything like that, or he's struggling, but as far as being a leader, that a man role that would be, he doesn't have that. He's, you know, if, if he got married, his wife would run all over him for real. So um, he said he wanted to be able to know how to lead. And the Lord just brought that to my remembrance, the book. So I sent it to him and OMG, this, this, the moment I sent it to him, he started reading. And he made some notes and sent it to me, said, oh, my God, this is what I got. And he wrote that down. And this is what I got from chapter two, you know, mm -hmm. lesson two. And uh, in this, you know, so the book really, really served an, a real significant purpose. And not just the fact that, you know, it's just a book, but the leadership qualities mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm and examples and, and definitions it's just really really good and i'm telling you i have given that book to at least seven persons that i know that would benefit from the book so i, I just want to thank you for that also that was uh, that was really good amen amen, amen. Okay, I have a song to play while we're thinking of more testimonies, and the song is a testimony as well. Amen. My life must change. Hallelujah. Amen. Must change. Never has a choice. Amen. 
and my life mm -hmm. has changed in the this year mm -hmm. and I testify mm -hmm. to the glory of God. Mm -hmm. I never, never be the same again. Never. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Amen. Amen. I need a testimony. Amen. Amen. I just want to thank the Lord this morning. It's not planned. This testimony is not planned, but uh, God deserves the glory in everything He's doing in our life. Amen. In this platform, uh, by uh, listening to this song, I remember when uh, uh, Pastor Mildred scheduled fast with me. It was only one day. The people of God. By the time we finished that first that evening, and when she was praying with me, the word that came out of my mouth is what the song is saying. This, the, there was a, a song too, and she even sent it to me right there. What the song was saying, I will never go back to, to the way it was. I will not go back, will go back to the, same, to the way he used to be. Yes, yes. Because he came, he came through for me or something, yeah. Yes. So today I just want, I'm reflecting and I'm thanking the Lord for the divine encounter of meeting this platform. And I have grown so much. And like uh, she just said that we need to reestablish the altar, people of God. There we used to have a family altar where we used to pray, just the three sisters. But uh, the devil came through and scattered everything till we were not praying anymore. And through this platform, that altar is reestablished. Amen. 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 When we were given the assignment to do the strongman prayer, and uh, I wanted to do my own, but I said, my sister, can you come along? When we do it together, I think it's going to be different. Yes, she came. And when my mom found about it, she is like, we need to do this. And she said she doesn't know when this will end, but we have to do this. And I said, we have to do which finish it before the end of the year. But to where we are, we don't even think of uh, finishing it. We don't think of letting go because we see how much the Lord is ministering to each, of, each one of us every day, setting the captive of this family free. So I thank the Lord because I don't know if there was a way for that altar to be reestablished again. And we did not want our mom to be part of it. You know, mothers, when we do things, she want to be everywhere I go, but I say no. And yesterday, she, uh, two days ago, she was saying that the way I was part of a prayer group for years, and uh, we don't know how that one scattered, and this one is uh, back. We have we are going to hold on onto this one now. That she does not want us to stop. We have to keep moving. And I just want to thank the Lord because this is so powerful. Having the altar of the family and praying almost every night. And yeah. the Lord is doing so much. And I just want to thank the Lord for this platform. What is going on here is very tangible and it's very serious. And I praise the Lord for all of you, for all that you are doing to impact my life. I thank the Lord so much that unity is back in my family. Unity is back in the life of the four of us that's supposed to be the pillar. Your mother being the first one to be saved in her family of many, when you count from her father's side to her mother's side, when you just put food together by saying, you and your sisters, your direct cousin, your uncle and your aunts and your children, you can find 100 people, I'm telling you. Direct family, you can find 100 people, but she's the only one to be saved after 50 years of age. Wow. 
all, I, I thank the Lord for the reestablishment of the health of my family. Amen. I thank God so much. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Midia. Thank you, Pastor Kwame. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Pastor Shelley. Thank you. Thank you so much for mm -hmm. the consistency, for the way you are pushing us. May the Lord bless you and reward you for everything you are doing in this platform. Truly, mm -hmm. my life will never be the same. Amen. 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 God. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to play the song you mentioned, but I just want to reiterate here about, you know, the altars. You know, altars and pastor, um, Kwame will correct me if I'm wrong here. You have levels, you have your individual altar, then you have your family altar, then you, you grow from there to a community altar, then from there to a global altar. It's very difficult to host a global altar if you don't have a personal altar. It's difficult to host a community altar without a personal altar. And it's difficult to host a family altar without a personal altar. So that growth stems from our personal altars. Personal, then family. Then from there we go to community and then global. Amen. One of the reasons why most organizations do not really, really succeed over time is because the people may have a personal altar, but they don't have a family altar. Then they want to host a community. You know, you see that one leg is missing, so the building is tilting. It's just a matter of time for everything to crumble. And then talk less of attempting a global, I mean, to just crush you all together. <laughs> because all levels come with mighty challenges. So yes. we need to yes. at every level, have testimonies to show for, and then move to the, then the Lord promotes you to the next level. Amen. 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 Pastor, would you want to say something about that? I just want to say it's, it's in line. And uh, since we are talking about repairing the altar, I want to remind us of the fact that when you raise your own personal altar, which we all should have, if there is no word that you have heard from the Lord, pick up your scripture and look for something and hold on to it. Because from Genesis to Revelation tells us about Christ and how we can advance the kingdom. So pick up something from there and say, Lord, I don't know if I'm hearing or not, but I read from Ezra 7 verse 10, and the word says, for Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observance of the law and to teaching his decrees and laws in Israel. I don't see anywhere else in scripture where it says the Lord called Ezra and made him a scribe. But what I see is Ezra devoted himself. So because I don't have anything, and I would love to be a scribe, I love to be a teacher of the mm -hmm. word of God. Father, I am taking verse, Ezra 7 verse 10 as mine, mm -hmm. and I pray that you make it happen for me. Let it come through in my life that mm -hmm. I am a scribe, and I would understand the law of the Lord, and I would teach it. You know, when you hold on to that scripture, the Lord is looking for teachers of the word. Amen. Why is that? It's because when the people understand the word of God, there is joy in the heart of the Lord. Yes. It becomes our strength. The scripture in Nehemiah that says, the joy of the Lord is my strength, comes because the people have understood the word of God. So let us not deprive the Lord of his joy. Let us become people who explain the word of God even more. And when you stand on your own personal altar and say, Lord, I want to be somebody who understands your word and so that I can also know how to communicate your words to your people, the Lord will answer you and your altar will begin from there. And before you know it, you can host a community altar and it just goes from there. So I just wanted to add that and just thank God also that the things that are happening, the testimonies that we are hearing, you know, 
Pastor Jones having this uh, anointing into the apostolic. What is season? Apostolic mm -hmm. anointing. What is season? What is season? You know, so we just thank God, Sister June, experiencing such a, a pay raise. You know, the season is here. We are looking forward to everyone coming to tell us that I have seen increase. We prayed for increase on the platform. You Amen. know, an apostolic anointing for someone who is doing the work of God is increase. Amen. So there have been two testimonies of increase this morning. Amen. Amen. So Amen. let us, we heard Mother Mildred also say that when she's studying a book of, of scripture, any of these books, you know, there is a testimony in her life that is attached to it. Tell the Lord, say, may I not miss the purpose of this book for my life in this season. Amen. You know, so that you also, you get it. When you get it and you are talking about it, there is more impact. Why? Because you received something that yes. you are giving on to others. And in the kingdom of God, when we look at Christ feeding 5,000 people, why, did, why was he able to do that? Because he had received, you know, he had received five loaves of bread and two fish. When you receive from the Lord and you are giving unto others, it just keeps multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let our focus, beloved, let our focus be that okay, I am studying this book. I am studying this book. Oh, I'm reading the book of Daniel. Who in, in this, on this platform can tell me that the Lord calls Daniel? That is what I saw in scripture. There is nothing like that. But Daniel purpose in, him, in, him, in himself not mm -hmm. to defile the Lord. He still make your own decision and the Lord answers and stays mm -hmm. with you. Amen. Amen. So we are Amen. called to be ambassadors. That's called right. to be ambassadors. So you yeah. look at an aspect of the Lord that you say, I am going to demonstrate the Lord in this area. The Lord is looking for you. The Lord is looking for you. Amen. 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 Whom shall I send? Say, here I am. Send me, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you. May God bless. You know, your testimony, there's a testimony I want to keep for Monday, but beloved, permit me. <laughs> it just keeps coming up and more, coming up more and more. So during this season of the book of Ezra, where we, uh, one thing we've recognized is that our home generally is a um, is a is a temple, is a it's an altar. But in this season, we decided to dedicate an entire section, a quiet section that is closed up where we can enter and wait on the Lord, and the children can do likewise because we're trying to establish a legacy whereby the children, while they are with us, they can get into a room and wait on the Lord Ooh. on their and then come out from that room. And then maybe go to school or go to work and all of that. So that in their own time, in their own homes, with their own children, they'll do the same. Amen. So Amen. we finished establishing that room yesterday. My husband and I dedicated that room yesterday. Wow. As we talk about establishing, you know, walking the pages of scripture. So before the children went to bed last night, I think Eva was already asleep because she came back from work. So I, I told, and she knows about it. So I told Bina and Shana, they went to the room and they were like, mommy, what is this? My husband was in the basement. I said, Mommy, it's, a, it's an altar. So they said, Mommy, what is an altar? I said, It's a place where you go and meet with the Lord. I said, Oh, okay. I mean, it was just normal to them. I was waiting for the next question. Yeah. And, you know, but it just resonated with them. Mm -hmm. And they said, Okay. I said, You can pray when you're about to go to school. You can go there and pray. Then the, one of them said, But also, when we come back from school, we'll come here and pray. I said, Yes, Mommy, that's what you should do. Amen. Wow. Then when it was bedtime, I said, okay, go and pray to the Lord. In that room, there is communion and there are many bottles of anointing oil. Everybody took their own bottle of anointing oil and then they took communion. They went to their separate chairs. Beloved, I mean, I, I wish I recorded everything. When they started praying, I started crying. Wow. They prayed for five minutes continually. 
Amen. I'm telling you the truth. They had yes, so many yes. things to tell the Lord. I'm like, Father, so these children have things to tell you wow. at this age. They wow. prayed, they prayed, then they started praying in tongues. Whatever they were saying, Jesus. only God. I cried and I cried and I cried. Then later on, they took the anointing oil, the, the, both of them, they put it on their, Amen. Ear, wow. hear better, on their lips, Father, I will speak better, on their nose, Father, I will smell better. Wow. Every, every part of their body, they declared something. Amen. Then after wow. that, they took communion. By the, beloved, I was not in the room. Amen. I, I at my own room and I tried to record the latter part of it. And then later on, they said, we are done. And they came out and they were happy. Then they told me, mommy, I anointed my face and I took communion and I, and I talked to God. Oh my God. Wow. I just did not know what to say. I was just so happy. I'm like, Father, what are you doing with this generation? Amen. What are you doing? Amen. And they went to bed and they just went and climbed on their bed and they were so happy that they prayed and they took communion and anointed themselves. Wow. Amen. That is what the book of Ezra has birthed for us. I was waiting to give this testimony next week, but I just had to do it now. Amen. What has this done for them? They know that they have a consecrated area in the house where they can enter close the door and talk to the Lord. And then live from there and face life. Oh, Father. I will testify again on this point on Monday. I will. Amen. 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 That's beautiful. How old are they? They just turned six in October. October wow. 5th. Wow. You know, you have heard the prayer. They're going to have fire in their bones. <laughs> Amen. Huh. Amen. The fact that they did not question what altar is any further what was so amazing to me. I just told them it's a place you meet with God and it was just okay with them. And when they went there, they met with God. Amen. Amen. Oh. And they're going to have a Samuel experience as well. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Amen. That's what I hear. Amen. I received that. Thank you so much. Wow. Yes. For sharing that. Amen. That is powerful. Mm. Amen. This reminds me um, of Isaiah 43 and 19. And the Lord says, Behold, I do a new thing. It shall spring forth, and ye shall not know it. You know? Mm -hmm. You know, because of the altar of establishment was set in place, and because of the altar in Uganda was established, um, I really, I, I really, really believe. I mean, I know that God is, he's turning things around. He's turning your enemies to like, they can't even speak. They can't even speak, you know, and he's causing ridiculous favor to fall on the children of God. And it also reminds me of um, in 92 and verse 12. It says the righteous, the righteous, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree mm-hmm. and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. 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 Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Those that be planted in the house, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall mm-hmm. flourish mm-hmm. In the of our God. Amen. Mm-hmm. I just praise God for what he's about to do in each and every one of our lives. And even in the lives of our children, we hear Mama Mama um, Mildred testimony about the, 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 the girls, the, the babies, you know, and here they are seeking the Lord, you know. And so um, I just praise God. Just praise God. Amen. 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 It's six or five. <laughs> I do not place it at Coco Songs. Should we move it to Monday? Just because some people are going to work, or what do you guys suggest? 
It's okay. Uh, my mom is doing it's fine. It's the presence of the Lord is so tangible. That's why we are all here. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Amen. So I should go ahead and play. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Wanted. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. God. Amen. Mm, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We'll just um six fourteen. Um we'll just pray and we'll appreciate the Lord for the testimony that He has given us. Amen. Amen. So um I'm gonna pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, we just want to thank you, Lord God Almighty, for all the testimonies that, Lord God Almighty, we have shared on this platform, where your word says we overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Yeah. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this testimony that, Lord, they are permanent, O King of glory, and we cover the testimonies with the blood of Jesus. Yes, Father, Lord. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for your mighty outstretched hand, oh God. For your word says, Lord God Almighty, that whom you have set free is being free indeed. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you for setting each and every one of our lives free on this platform. Yes. And as the word says, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, no weapon formed against our our health, no weapon formed against our career, our job, our ministry, no weapon formed against our children shall prosper. Father, it is yes. your word. Father, we claim it, we hold it, and show salute the abortions in the name of Jesus. Father, we just want to thank you for the victory that you have granted each and every one of this platform. Victory over sickness, victory, Lord, over delay, victory over stagnation, victory over failure. Father, we say thank you lord god almighty we thank you for this week for you alone you have seen us through all this week father we thank you for your grace as a songwriter says that there's no more going back oh god because he said whoever put his hand on the plow and look back is not fit for the kingdom father we yes. thank you that as we have sung this song let this song be evidence of our life in the name of jesus that there's no more going back there's no more going back that lord we are pressing for Forward. We are pressing forward for, for, for perfection. We are pressing forward, Lord God Almighty, for the mark, for the mark, Lord God Almighty, of perfection, for the mark to attain yes. height of sanctification in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank, thank you, Lord. you, Lord, as you grant us the grace because on our own we cannot do it. For you yourself, you are holy. Father, because you are holy, we receive the grace, Lord God Almighty, to be yes. holy also in the name of Jesus. Father, we just Thank you, Lord, for your servant. We thank you for the ones that you have called, your anointed ones on this platform. That, Lord, you will continue to anoint them more fire, more anointing over their life. Yes, as they, as they have submitted their, themselves under your leadership for you to guide and lead and direct them. Father, we thank you that, Lord, as you continue to use them to bless us, as you continue, Lord God, to anoint them, to give us the word that we need. And as your servant told us today, O King of Glory, that as we seek your face we should ask for that word that word that is going to transform our life that will hold it and will run in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. That if we say take the glory, take the honor, that as we are living this place, we are not living out of your presence, but your presence continue to go with us wherever we go, be it our job site, as we go to do our areas. Let your presence be a shield, be a covering. The same way that Moses said, if your presence will not go with us, we are not going. Father, we acknowledge your presence around us in the name of Jesus. Even around our children okay. also, in our homes, in our tents, in our car, wherever we go, that presence of yours go with us in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for all that you have done in our life. And we pray, Lord God Almighty, that the same way that Ezra devoted himself, Lord God Almighty, that we desire, we crave, we desire for that same grace to seek you, Lord God Almighty, more and more, to know you more and more, O King of God. He grant us that grace that we will yes. be able to be like Ezra, that was so committed, that was so devoted, that he, he, um, he, didn't, he didn't want to be only like a, um, a listener, but Lord, he could, he could search the word and teach the people 
put everything into practice, into action. Father, we desire that same grace also on this platform in the name of Jesus. In the name Father, of Lord, Jesus. Thank you. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. That Lord, throughout this weekend, Lord God Almighty, that let us have encounter, give us dreams, give us revelation, give us vision in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that as we are coming back on Monday, we are coming, being full with your Holy Ghost and power in the name yes. of Jesus. Daddy, we say take the glory, take the honor, now and forever in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Yeah. Amen. 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 Amen and amen. amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Let me share the grace. May the grace the faith of our Lord and Lord Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ Amen. the love of God Amen. fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit. Amen. Glory to God. God bless everyone. Have a great day.